Hi, my name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a concept and character artist. I run the Zero Guides and the 3D Snippets website, and I teach online at the 3D Concept Artist Academy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an image like this from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. This tutorial and project overview will be divided in four parts. The sketching and concepting stage, which will be done in Krita. The 3D blockout and sculpting in ZBrush. The texturing of the assets in Substance 3D Painter. And the rendering in Marmoset Toolbag 4. All right, so to start with this project, I use Krita to quickly sketch out some ideas. I like to use this software because the brushes allow me to experiment a lot faster with the forms and the values. There's a cool brush called the RGBA06 Rocks, and this is the one that produces a quick overlapping effect to build essentially rock formations. This is perfect for the sort of concept that I'm going for. At this stage, I'm not interested in details at all. The brush that I'm using gives me some texture already and some suggestions of details, and that's plenty for what I need. The focus at this stage is on the silhouette and essentially the flow of the structures. That's why I'm going for these kind of like curvy lines. The idea for this concept can fall within the fantasy or, or the, maybe the sci-fi theme. So I like to take that into account when I'm playing around with these thumbnails. For instance, adding a bit of a thin area or like a hollow portion at the bottom of the structure will definitely make it look very weak and almost impossible for it to hold a massive rock on the top. But because it is fantasy, what we're dealing with in this case, the aesthetic of the design might suggest some kind of like magic or a power coming from the crystal that affect gravity or something like that. And once I had a bunch of these ideas ready, I went over all of them with a bright color just to place the suggestions of where the crystals might be. The idea with the bright color is not just to create contrast, but to make it easier to see the balance between the stone material and the crystal material. And again, to emphasize the idea of that magic surround this asset, I added some floating crystals, which will be the focus point of this composition. The last sketch I did was actually the one that I decided to go for. So I spent a few more minutes just polishing and refining some ideas I wanted to explore, like carvings around the circular gap at the top of the structure and, and that sort of thing. All right, so now we're moving into the blocking and the setup of this asset in 3D. ZBrush is my preferred tool to create any 3D related content, but you could achieve similar results with any other 3D application. I'm using a custom UI in ZBrush just to speed up the process, but all of the tools that I use in this project are very simple and I'll mention them as I go. Like in most of my projects, I like to start very simple and use very basic geometry shapes to validate the idea. So I use the Gizmo 3D to move, scale and rotate a simple cube to recreate that main structure of the concept. A cool tip for you is that you can hold control and click and drag with the gizmo to duplicate the mesh and ZBrush will automatically mask out the rest. I also like to use the formers from the gear icon in the gizmo 3D to quickly morph the geometry. And another cool technique is to sketch things out subtracting geometry with the live booleans in ZBrush. So for this, I took a simple cube and used the knife brush to cut out some portions and just make it look more like a piece of a stylized rock. The blue color is just to show you what I will be doing in a second. I also brought in a cylinder, modified it a little bit with the gizmo, and from the subtool palette, selected the subtract icon in the subtool. Then you can go ahead and turn the live booleans and see how the cylinder is basically removing that volume from the main structure. You can also find the live boolean switch under the render palette. Now I can do the same process with the rock shape I made earlier and start chopping pieces away of the main structure. The cool thing is that you can see in real time what the boolean is doing as you move the geometry around. You can also use the trick that I mentioned earlier of holding control and click and drag a new piece of geometry. And as you move it around, it will subtract that volume as well because it is the same subtool. Now, in order to apply these booleans, I like to create a folder and drop all of the subtools in there. And from the folder gear icon, you can click on the Boolean folder operation and that will keep all the originals in the folder, turn them off and give you the resulting mesh of the Boolean operation as a new subtool. At this point, you can enable Dynamesh, which is a tool that you can find under the Geometry sub-palette from the Tool Palette. And because every time that you read Dynamesh, you essentially rebuild the geometry, it makes it really easy to sketch these type of things. I like using the Knife Brush with the Control and Shift key to cut out pieces, and the Masking Brush is holding Control, like the Mask Lasso, to protect areas of the mesh and then use the Gizmo 3D to move entire sections. The key here is not to be worried about destroying the mesh. We are literally just sketching in 3D and the refining process will come later. To continue with this piece, I added a cylinder to refine that area around the empty space at the top of the structure, that cylindrical area. And I use the sculpting brushes to begin the sculpting process. I like to use the clay tubes for this type of meshes, like anything that's more organic. 
And to get a sense of where the ground would be, I just added a cube and squashed it on the y-axis. Then the sculpting process and the refining of the rock is pretty repetitive process. I use a custom brush to carve in into the model and create those very prominent crevices and cracks, but you can use a brush like the damn standard brush that comes with ZBrush or even the Slash 3 if you want something a bit stronger. And throughout this process, I always rely on the masking tools to make adjustments as I go. Now, in order to create the other smaller structures or the other rocks of the scene, I appended a cylinder, polished it a little bit to make it smoother, and then with the knife brush, I cut out some portions just to create those very clean and clear planes. With the Gizmo 3D, you can use a deformant like the Bend Arc uh, to take any mesh and give it some curvature. So now that I have this base, I can use the Gizmo 3D to basically duplicate this piece around and variate the size, the rotation, and, and obviously the placement. So now we end up with a more complex piece that has some repetition of the same asset, but you can quickly change that by tweaking each piece individually using the move brush, for example, or even cutting some additional portions uh, of the duplicates using the, the knife brushes. To complete the blockout, I merge everything together in a single subtool, and you can do that from the merge sub palette, and then redynamesh everything with a high resolution just to keep some of the details. So now that everything is a single piece, I went over the entire mesh and refined the transitions to make sure everything feels part of the same asset. To start adding more complexity and details to this mesh, I brought in a custom IMM brush that has lots of different stylized rocks and started adding them around the mesh. You can easily create your own IMM brushes by sculpting the asset that you want to insert and then going to the brush palette and clicking on the create insert mesh. This process is something that I covered in one of my previous videos where I created the stylized floating island. One of my favorite things about the process of using IMM brushes is that every time that you insert a new piece of geometry, ZBrush will mask out the rest of the mesh so you can quickly switch the Gizmo 3D to reposition or rotate the pieces and even the move brush to further change the shape of the inserted mesh. At this point, we have a pretty decent block out of the scene, so we'll just start adding some details. Now, in an effort to speed up this process, as this can be very repetitive, I'm using a custom brush to detail the rock. You can achieve similar results by selecting the layer brush that comes with ZBrush, or even the standard brush will do, and changing the alpha. You can also do a quick online search for some rocks alphas and just bring them into ZBrush to, again, speed up the detailing process. For the indentations and more prominent crevices, I use another custom brush that adds a little bit of a wiggle to the stroke so it feels more organic. You can totally achieve the same result with the Slash 3 and perhaps tweak the C intensity. Another brush that is really handy to fine-tune certain areas is the clay tube brush, and you can also push the geometry in. You can simply hold the Alt key in ZBrush as you sculpt to invert the effect of any brush. I do a final pass with the Trim Dynamic brush just so that I can reduce the noise level and make some areas a little bit flatter. With the knife brush, I went ahead and cut the bottom of the structure just to make it flush against the floor. Finally, to add those marks and carvings around the main rock, I used a custom version of the standard brush, which simply has a lot more strength in the Z intensity, and I also switched the Z add for C sub, so I'm pushing the geometry instead of pulling it out. Some additional refinements to sharpen the crevices a little bit more, and that's pretty much it for the sculpting process. You can use something like the damp standard brush to refine these crevices and, and get the same sort of sharp effect. For the next stage of the process, we're going to create the crystals, and this is a very simple process, and we will create complexity out of some simple assets. In a new tool, I use a cylinder as a base for the crystal shape and follow the same process I use with the boolean tool, but this time with the knife brush, just to cut out some pieces and get something that looks like a, like a rough crystal shape. From the brush palette, I created a new IMM brush by clicking on the Create Insert Mesh button at the bottom of the palette. I also modified the depth at which the crystal will be embedded into the mesh, and you can do that from the brush palette under the Depth sub palette. That's the icon in my UI that I have next to my brush thumbnail. Now the process is more of the same, right? You can quickly change the size of the crystal by how much you drag. I just added a red color to the crystals purely so it is easy to see where they are. For the crystals at the base of the structure, I follow the same idea. I just added a new alternative to the crystal brush by rotating the camera and clicking on the Create Insert Mesh button again. The IMM brushes will insert the mesh that you have on the canvas based on the position of the camera. So that helps to create a crystal that is slightly tilted and that it follows the crevices of the base of the rock. For some additional variation of the crystal, I use the same brush that I used to set up the rock structure, but obviously with a smaller sizes and, and just scattered them around. 
And now because we have lots of geometry added with the IMM brush, I use the Decimation Master plugin to simplify the geometry of the crystals. This is a very simple two-click operation where you can analyze the mesh by clicking on the pre-processed current button, and then you can set the percentage you want to reduce the mesh by and click on Decimate Current. I will be adding all the high frequency details in the texture later on, but if you want, you can also use the surface noise to add a bit of surface detail to the mesh. The noisemaker window lets you control things like the intensity, the size, the profile of the noise so that you can basically get something very convincing with just a few sliders. Now, in order to optimize this project and take it into Substance 3D Painter, I went ahead and duplicated the entire base and used the C remesher process in ZBrush to automatically generate a simpler topology. This is a feature that you can find under the Geometry Sub Palette in the Tool Palette. And I basically ran this a few times with the half switch enable to reduce the topology. So every time that you click on Z remesher, it will reduce the topology roughly by half. The reason I duplicated the mesh first is that once I have the simplified topology, I can go ahead and project all those details from the DynaMesh sketch into the newly retopologized version of the mesh with subdivisions. And you can find this button under the project section in the subtool palette. The last piece of the puzzle to complete this asset is the main crystal. So I just repurposed the asset that I turned into an IMM brush before and modified a little bit with the taper deformer from the Gizmo 3D and added some tiny duplicates floating around of the main piece just to add visual interest. To bring this tiny asset to the same level and optimize it in the same way, I use the Siri measure again on a duplicate and project the high res version, exactly the same process as the main structure. The last thing we need to do before exporting the scene is to create UVs for all the pieces. You can totally do that with a different software, and that's probably if you want to have more control over the distribution of the UV islands, but I like the simplicity of the UV master in ZBrush. On the lowest subdivision level, I use the selection tools, which you can access by holding Control and Shift, to hide areas of the mesh and then assign a different polygroup or polygon ID with Control and W. Then from the UV Master sub palette under the C plugin palette, you can enable the polygroup switch on and click on the unwrap button. That's pretty much it. Sirius will use the difference between the polygroups to cut through the model and create the UV islands. You can go ahead and check the UVs by clicking on the morph UVs, uh, which basically displays an unwrapped version of the 3D model. This is a switch that I have in my UI, but you can find it under the UV map sub palette from the tool palette. That's pretty much for this stage. I simply follow the same steps to generate automatic UVs for the other tools, and that's it. The final step to export this project is to generate the low res and the high res to bake the textures in Substance 3D Painter. I went ahead and renamed every single subtool with an underscore and the word low as the suffix. I also make sure that every subtool was in the lowest subdivision level and exported the low res as an FBX. Then I follow the same process for the high res file, but changing the word in the suffix to high and re-exporting everything in the highest subdivision level, which might take a little bit longer. 